Hey, what is going on all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. If you were to show a random person on the street a picture of a giant rectangle on wheels and ask them what they would call this, they would most likely think you were some kind of psychotic bus nut and walk away from you most hastily. Not to be confused with a regular bus nut. And if you continued your line of questioning to the random people walking by you, you may eventually find yourself in the presence of police officers questioning you about what you are up to. Excuse us. Oh, me excuse me. Uh, we are looking for nuclear weapons. Can you tell me where the naval base is in Alameda? We are, we are and if you explain to the officers that you were just trying to make a YouTube video about buses, you'll most likely get your question regarding the picture answered by the officer and then be told to leave the area. And most likely, the officer would say that this is a picture of a bus. With all of that, I would probably then awkwardly thank the officers for their time and walk away while being frustrated that this was indeed a picture of a coach, not a bus. The term coach originates from back in the 15th century in Hungary. Under the rule of King Matthias Corvinus, he had a bit of a thing for flair. You could say that he coined the concept of traveling in style. Riding on horseback, being escorted by soldiers was simply not glamorous enough for King Matthias Corvinus. So he asked his wheelwrights, which are people who build and repair wagon wheels, to find him a more stylish solution. And so they did. A group of wheelwrights from the small village of Koch, which still exists today, just an hour car ride west of the capital Budapest, invented a special type of horse-drawn carriage with a steel spring suspension. Mainly used by the wealthy and powerful, these early luxury forms of transportation became very popular and the idea and design spread throughout Europe. Talk about a fancy hood ornament. Sorry Mercedes, you got nothing on this. These 15th century pimp rides became known as the Carts of Koch and later on the name was shortened to simply Koch or Coach in English. Now, moving forward a few hundred years as the steam engine became the more prominent means of propulsion instead of the horse, the first motorized coach and bus was powered by a steam engine, or motor, and thus the term motor coach was coined. Even today, the coat of arms for the village of Koch in Hungary bears an image of a coach that represents the wheelwright's invention and the start of the luxury transportation coach industry. If you ever find yourself driving to the village of Koch in Hungary as you enter the town from the south on Dadi Way Street, you'll still see their claim to fame as there'll be a picture of the first coach ever made just past the village sign. Something to add to your bucket list for all you hardcore motor coach nerds out there. If you ever do get a selfie of yourself standing in front of this sign, please send it to me. I will send you a free Motor Coach World t-shirt or hoodie. Today, the bus and the motor coach both serve as an important means of transportation throughout the world. Although the average person would identify both of them as buses, they wouldn't be entirely wrong. The way I would describe this topic is that buses come in many different flavors. There's banana, I mean school bus, there's city transit buses, and there's the motor coach, or otherwise known as the coach bus. Among these three common types of buses, there are also a bunch of subsets of more mission-specific types like prison transport buses and open-top tour liners that are basically motor coaches or school buses that have been heavily modified to fit a certain task. The main thing that sets a motor coach apart from any other type of buses is that a coach carries passengers for longer periods of time as they tend to travel longer distances and make fewer stops in between if any. Coach buses tend to be privately chartered, although some are regulated to schedule line run routes that, again, tend to be longer distance as they take passengers from city to city rather than operate a route within a city. Sometimes coaches are chartered to operate as event shuttles, relegating them to do local shuttling on a set route, usually created by the chartering party or event director, basically turning them into city buses, except only for the participating guests of that event. While city transit buses and school buses tend to operate on a regular inner city schedule and routes, they also tend to be confined to mainly operating within a specific metropolitan area. City buses and school buses will make multiple and more frequent stops while they operate their route within their respective communities. Aside from taking students to and from school, school buses will also frequently be chartered by the schools they service to take students to sport competitions and field trips as well. Now, if the distance of the sports game or field trip destination is far enough, 
school staff and teachers will often choose to charter a coach bus for their trip for a more comfortable ride. But only if the school has the means to do so, as chartering a coach bus is usually more pricier than requesting a school bus that would typically already be a part of the school district's yearly budget. School buses and city buses are typically in service for the public. Although some school buses are privately owned, they usually have contracts with the local public school districts that pay for their operation costs. Not as common, some motor coach companies are publicly owned as well and provide public transportation. A very famous one being Greyhound, having a fleet of around 1,700 motor coaches. Now with that said, most motor coach companies in the US are privately owned mom and pop small businesses. But some privately owned motor coach companies can also have deals where their coach buses are contracted by a public organization, such as cities or larger universities, to provide transportation for the public. In the US, a motor coach will typically be larger and heavier than that of a city bus or school bus. There are a few exceptions, like mini coaches designed for smaller groups and being able to get in and out of tighter areas. Articulated city transit buses will typically be longer than that of a motor coach as well. But the standard length of a full-size motor coach in the U.S. is 45 feet. A standard full-size city bus is typically 40 feet, and school buses can range somewhere between 20 to 40 feet long as well. Now, there are also a few cities in the U.S. out west that operate double-decker city transit buses that come in 40 to 45-foot versions. In the US, a motor coach will typically have an additional axle and set of single wheels in the rear to create more stability and ride comfort at high speeds, as coaches are designed to travel more on the interstates. This is known as the tag axle. The tag axle also functions as an additional set of brakes to increase the stopping power since motor coaches are much heavier in comparison to that of a city transit bus and school buses. The standard 40-foot school bus or city transit bus in the US typically has only two axles. The only city transit buses in the U.S. to have three axles are the before-mentioned double-decker Dennis Enviro city transit buses that, like a motor coach, have a third tag axle in the rear, and the 60-foot-long articulated transit buses that have a third axle in the rear section of the bus. However, it's important to note that the rear third axle on the articulated buses are not a tag axle, but rather the actual drive axle, meaning that these are the set of wheels that provides all the driving power for the bus to move. Standard single-deck motor coaches will also be taller in comparison to a school bus and city transit bus as the passenger cabin on a coach is built on top of the luggage compartment. Again, coach buses are designed to transport passengers to further destinations and thus designers and engineers of the modern-day motor coaches built these large cargo spaces in anticipation of passengers packing lots of stuff for longer trips. Now, some school buses can come with luggage compartments as well. However, they're nowhere near the size of the luggage compartment of a motor coach. Also, it's important to note that school bus operators can add the luggage box module that is attached to the bottom of the school bus should they want additional storage space on their school bus fleets. A passenger who is used to riding school buses and city transit buses will usually be pleasantly surprised when stepping on board a motor coach as one will find the interior of a coach bus to have many more features and creature comforts than that of a school bus or city transit bus. On longer journeys, especially with a bus full of school kids, teachers and chaperones will be especially delighted that their motor coach will have a restroom, TVs, and DVD players on board, saving them from hours of monotonous screaming and shouting, as well as a grueling itinerary filled with restroom breaks at public rest areas and truck stops. The plush reclining seats with arm and feet rests, along with reading lights and personal air blowers above each seat, combined with the insulated passenger cabin on a motor coach, will also create a much quieter and more comfortable ride for its passengers. Now, if you're a school bus or transit bus enthusiast or drive one of them, please understand that this is not a competition of which is better. When it comes to buses, I have a passion for all of them, and they each serve a very important purpose. Bottom line is, each of these buses were designed to serve a very important role in our world. Coach buses were specifically designed for more of a focus on entertainment and comfort, given that passengers on board typically travel longer distances and will be on board for a longer duration of time. Now, I've heard coach drivers slamming school buses. I've heard school bus drivers slamming transit buses. I've heard transit bus drivers slamming coach drivers. Now, if you're one of these people, 
please don't hate. We're all carrying the same passengers in the end, just at different time and purposes in their lives. And it simply won't benefit our industry as a whole. You're damn right it won't. Now both of you, get out! Today, many of those who work in the school bus and city bus side of the industry will also refer to their vehicles as coaches. As technology advances and the school bus and city buses become more sophisticated, some of them are being equipped with more and more features that bring them closer to the comforts of a motor coach. In larger metropolitan areas, certain longer cross-country city bus routes require buses to travel far enough to warrant a hybrid variant of a motor coach crossed with a city bus. Known as the commuter coach, it's basically a motor coach that's been converted to be a city transit bus. These buses have some of the comforts of a coach bus, such as overhead parcel racks, personal air blower vents and reading lights for each seat, and forward-facing reclining seats with footsteps to accommodate the passengers for longer duration of travel while still being equipped like a city transit bus to accommodate the public. With the restrooms removed, these commuter coaches are equipped with faster style transit folding doors to allow boarding and disembarking easier and faster, as well as a scrolling marquee sign above the front windows to allow the public to see which route the coach is servicing. The driver's dashboard area of the commuter coach also has a more Spartan layout with metal toggle switches instead of the traditional flat plastic toggle buttons on a regular motor coach. Motor Coach Industries or MCI manufactures a few different models of these commuter coaches for city transit companies, such as the D4000CT being 40 feet long and the D4500CT being 45 feet long which are built on the same framework of an MCI D model motor coach. Both of these models also come with hybrid electric or natural gas options. In 2020, MCI released the new D45 CRT LE commuter coach, which is built on the framework of an MCI J4500. With a completely new body style, the D45 CRT LE offers an innovative low floor vestibule area in the midsection of the coach, for easier boarding and disembarking of passengers that require mobility devices to get around. With a simple ramp, the passenger utilizing a wheelchair could easily roll onto the low floor vestibule of the coach and no longer have to be lifted from the ground up to the passenger deck, saving the passenger and operator time and hassle. Well folks, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. As always, if you feel that I've stated anything in the video incorrectly or have more to add on this topic, please be sure to leave it down in the comment box below. And if you like this video, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And remember to check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash motorcoach. If you wanna support my channel and become a patron, it takes just two minutes and I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, if you're watching this, you are part of the motorcoach world.